Hello, welcome to Point On Studio. My name is Jungwoo Park. Um, today, I'm going to talk about common architectural modeling mistake um, that you didn't intend to, to do it, but it always happens. And um, when you exchange your model data, it could be, uh, you know, it really cause big problem in terms of quantity takeoff or material takeoff. And so, um, so these 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 simple most of them you can simply uh, solve the issue but it's just new many case uh, users are not aware of uh, this sort of modeling mistake so let's go ahead and take a look um, what kind of common mistakes architects and structural engineers um, uh, makes in terms of beam model and today um, the example I'm showing is based on Revit model, but that this sort of common mistakes it up it usually applies for all other BIM authoring softwares. So it doesn't matter which software you you use for your BIM workflow, but it's a matter of um, like sh the knowing the common issue in um, architecture or structural model. Let's go ahead. Um, so you see here, I um, made about 20 common mistakes, but some of them is repeating issue, but nevertheless, I'm going to go through each of them. So let's have a look first of all, uh, this structural beam, uh, um, which joining to another structural beam. In this case, concrete beam was coped by st steel framing. I, I'm sure this is not intent to be model like that, but because of the, in general, this join geometry tool in Revit, uh, users often make a mistake. So in Revit model, you might not see, but when you uh, share your model for different discipline, um, and you know, you can definitely find it, um, this sort of issue. It's not collision, but it's not correct, as you can see. Um, another case here, you can most of the case encounter that the columns comes up to the top of the beam, which is not intended to be, especially in, I mean, it can be a possible with a rectangular column um, and the, the concrete rectangular concrete beam can be attached to the column there in terms of um, many structural engineers model it for the FEA analysis. But when you look at this uh, um, cylinder column, like circular column, round column, goes up there and then it automatically subtract the geometry of rectangular beam and this sort of profile is happens and this is really uh, incorrect. So just make sure your column could, if it's structure, like in terms of reinforcement or it could finish bottom of the beam in this case and it avoids this sort of um, real geometry from your structural framing. It seems like nothing much but when you take off the quantity of your members that could be problematic. Right, another case here we are looking at is um, more or less um, the situation, the model um, steel columns and there is also steel connectors. But many of case, if you use Revit, um, they build this family as a one, but it's better to separate um, the steel connections as a separate element entities or let's say element category. Or if you build such a family, you could, um, you know, uh, mark this nested uh, steel connection as a, a shared element. So you would, you can avoid this mistake. I can show you what I mean by, um, I'm, let me go to one of the loadable family, let's say this um, column. If you ne nest another family in here, into, um, you know, into another family, there's option called shared. So that case, if you have like, um, um, one moment, I'll sketch it. So if you have like this sort of steel connectors, um, either on concrete or timber timber column or steel column, you may have like different steel connectors, connections, and trying to 
I mean, trying to avoid moderate in one family environment, rather you should nest uh, this part of connections into this column element and for this connector, still connection elements, make sure you can tick the shared. So when it's uh, nested into another family, this uh, separated um, connections can be also counted as a separate element. But, and also the benefit of using shared is that you can, um, you know, assign still connections as a different IFC entity and also you can specify column as IFC column so when you export IFC you can classify these two uh, different um, elements um, in further uh, use for collisions like SolidB or Navisurx or any other many other uh, IFC viewers so that's the common mistake I guess this applies to uh, not only for the um, Revit, if you use Archicad or other Bentley or Rhino blocks even, uh, just make sure these connections uh, not belong to one of the, like, into the column element as a one. So it's better to be separated. Okay, um, on the other hand here, if you look at precast column, um, there are many cases these covers um, are modeled as a separate element. So instead of having one column for this precast column, um, a lot of cases um, the I see the model has um, you know column is one separate geometry and then the covers uh, as another separate geometry and classify this cover as a column. So in IFC, you may count instead of one column here, you count three columns, which is problematic. So this issue also should be avoided. And um, many case, I know it's busy and maybe it's not important for early stage of your project, but later we have to build your model always as constructed, so as close to as built as built model. So on the left side here, the columns are split uh, between the floor levels, which is correct uh, in my opinion. But here, another case, there is a longer column, um, which is more than six meters height. And, um, you know, I mean, it can be happen when it's like really interesting design or structural design for the cantilever part or some, um, you know, but here, in this case, typical building structure between the level, this column should be split. So this is not good case. Another common mistake, mostly it happened because of this uh, in Revit or other software, for example, in Archicad, you have solid operation. Um, this join geometry, unjoined geometry, um, that uh, here it's up between stair, precast stair, I guess, and also the uh, slab landing situation where the joint geometry resulting this sort of very small piece of uh, surface, more, more like a surface geometry is rem remaining from wrong Boolean operation. And this sort of geometry is definitely going to give you some problem in IFC model. So just bear in mind that when you do joint geometry or solid operation in Archicad, be, sh be sure to uh, avoid this sort of remaining geometry in your uh, major ge major input geometry. And here, you you in I'm not sure in other software, but in Revit you can draw your floors or slabs based on sketches. And it's really funny, you have here, in this case, it's supposed to be one, two, three segments, or maybe this segment should be belong to another slab segment. But um, because of the Revit has ability to uh, model uh, like slab it with a different boundary condition, so in this case, we sketch three slabs as a one sketch solution, and when you count, this is actually uh, one slab instead of three different slabs. I'll give you another example. We can copy this three times. And, you know, we can delete these guys. One and another one. Delete these guys. And another one. Delete these guys. 
right? In this case, we have three different slabs, and on the other hand here, we have obviously in Revit, it looks like three different slabs, but it is actually one element, which means they sharing one GUID. Uh, so let's just quickly export this uh, this geometry to IFC, and you you will immediately understand what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna export this um, model in IFC format. So let's export IFC. Yeah, it's fine. Maybe. So when you look at here the result from the exported element Sorry, I'm gonna open now So when you look at the geometry or the element in, in uh, Solibri model viewer when I go to now um, the object slab and we have here one two three different slab one two three different slab uh, in this case it's funny it works as a three different slab uh, which I didn't maybe um, it's funny I, I was expecting that uh, this piece here it would be three uh, like it comes as a one element instead of three different slabs Maybe in Revit 2021 exporters, um, perhaps it's uh, this bug, it, maybe it, it, it's fixed it. So um, yeah, it's interesting. So you can sketch it like that. And then the result, you get three elements. But nevertheless, um, even though it works correctly in IFC, it's still uh, in Revit, uh, you have always the same GUID. Uh, I mean, you have same Revit ID. Uh, where okay interesting so in Solibri it gives you different ID number now so let me search now with this number makes me very curious now so when I say select okay this is correct that so it was that point these guys so for example here yeah as you can see these three elements they have exactly same um, Revit ID you see so that is uh, problematic because obviously the I mean it's not really big problem because the GUIs are different but nevertheless they have three of them same Revit ID um, to me it doesn't make any sense to mo make uh, I mean model three slab as a one sketch I don't know what's your opinion like but for me this is not good practice um, not only because of the IFC also Revit but later, you know, when you convert IFC XML file to JSON model or something like that, you definitely have some problem with this one, um, this geometry. Maybe if, if you have another opinion, please uh, give me comments on down there in my description box. So I, we can also make a dis like continue to research something. But yeah, I guess you get you got what I what I mean. All right. So another case, um, I I've seen this sort of um, cutting element um, of the wall, which divide wall, like with very thin um, gap there, and uh, it's kind of uh, the the wall is a very you can see the artifact here. It's not going to give you exact geometry, so I don't think this is a good practice probably um, used cut void geometry or other extrusion that cuts the world cause this sort of issue or maybe the small piece out of the slab when you join that can have this sort of cutting object gives you error but this practice is not good so anything uh, make over complicated for the geometry it's better to avoid um, in uh, BIM applications. And next one, if, if you look at this uh, sort of ramp or stair, many, many cases in Revit or other software, you use floor or other form geometry to create 
a little like a bit more flexible um, slab. But in this case, in when I look at in IFC, um, you see it should be separate segments. But in this case, first one and third one selected as one segment. I guess this issue also may be fixed in current Rabbit IFC exporter. But nevertheless, it's not good practice. It's always if it's segmented, it's better to model as a se segment slabs. And here, when I look at now structural column, I uh, sorry, this um, it's a downstand beam or upstand beam. It happens many case in concrete construction, and um, yeah, let's have a look. Most of case we are model. Um, let's have a look here. We are modeling su such a case with a beam. So let me just copy this here. Um, I'm gonna create another quickly here yeah well, I think I prepared this somewhere um, for a moment so here is the prepared uh, model as you can see we have here um, we draw it wall and then here we have with the beam and in between the slab and when it's jumping slab like this, you have like um, sort of uh, jet shapes. Um, in this case, it's upstanding beam, um, and you know, perhaps um, you know we can copy this one on there. I can move it a bit further, and I can delete this. So you could have like. Um, floor slab and then for the downstand beam a lot of case users draw or model with a wall but which is not correct it sh we should model with a beam so um, here if I draw here and move it back you know this case is more it's it's more accurate when you have uh, you know the actual structural framing with the correct category instead of wall so, but I I see this common mistake from many uh, beam modeler that they use wall instead of beam, and even when you use beam, perhaps you could maybe you could make it a bit bigger, like you know, let me just for the demonstration quickly move this. You may have downstream beam like that in your Revit model and um, many cases you expecting to join them automatically or you may leave it as it is so there is always collision or even though when you join you may join in this result or you may join them in this result you know we have to think always as constructed uh, model so you may you know you wouldn't have like this top of the beam as a flow element so i guess more or less on this this is the more correct uh, case of um, this sort of uh, downstand beam but let, let me export this guys and you, you see what i mean in ifc format so let's export And I'm gonna open it again. So we have those cases in here, and as you can see, that came correctly. And here we have a frame, which is beam, and we have floor. This is slab, and here is wall, which is absolutely not correct. So we can say that this is not correct, and this this is a correct case. And let's have a look on this case here, because of join geometry order this is cutting out so let me hide this element and you have this sort of um, slab which is segmented this is happens um, because of the join geometry and you know another problem here as you can see instead of two slab you have only one slab in this in this model so that is also another problem um, using you know join geometry but we ha always have to make i mean in this case join geometry is correct so this is 
the result I'm expecting to have but that is the not result what I want to have so you know just be careful when you use this uh, solid operation especially for this down downstand beam or upstand beam this sort of mistake always happens all right now, um, yeah, another case like this sort of complex work profile, I don't know why it always happens somehow because of the opening or again, this is the problem with the joint geometry. So this solid operation is really dangerous in our beam modeling. It's better to model as it is like clearly and precisely with a out of box tool and then trying to avoid this joint geometry solution in Revit or Archicad. Here is also funny, you have like window openings and probably the insertion point of your window elements um, giving small gap. So this sort of problem happens or even the lintel above the window, the framing uh, is inserted and then cut the geometry of the wall and then it gave this small um, funny uh, sort of shape in this case. This is also a common mistake by many case. Again, when you insert opening, opening element in on wall, and maybe the bottom here you inserted opening, but then maybe some part joined with a slab, not correct because slab thickness is not as thick as uh, the bottom of the wall in this case, and the remaining uh, geometry gives you this sort of funny result. So just always be careful with this join and cut solid operation. And also when you insert opening, as you can see this wall here, it becomes very complex uh, um, profile, which is, doesn't make sense. And trying to avoid this sort of mistake when you insert opening. And here, if you look at the wall, you may draw, okay, you may, you know, use sketch wall profile and then here you have window and on another wall, you also ch uh, modify the profile, but this is like, it's definitely not correct. You can model instead of that, um, in, this is the situation, yeah? When you have the wall, um, you could sketch one side here and another window opening side is here. And that is absolutely nonsense. It's better to make one side only this wall profile and on other side just straight wall so you don't have complex in between these two connections to me this makes much more sense in terms of modeling strategy here again I'm showing this sort of wall that is like splitted because of the rabbit uh, sketch profile option so now I'm very curious you have here you know you sketched it two different profile within one wall sketch and that gives you the sort of divide like division and hair void space and when you have another wall here which is joined by floor so you have at the end this sort of um, void space and here again you know it cuts through this um, floor with a join geometry but let me export these guys here these guys and let's see in IFC Supporting IFC fire. So if you look at these examples now, um, yeah, as you can see, that's obviously two different wall, but because of the wall sketch, like your wall profile is uh, sketched in that way, this element now is uh, is actually one element which is incorrect definitely two element here so trying to avoid sketching your wall profile in Revit in that way you know instead of sketching to like sketching that way you could make sure to have one wall to that height and another wall I mean, obviously you should use, uh, you should constrain bottom and top of your wall to the correct uh, level, but you know, always good to draw two walls 
in this case instead of sketching it that way so you can always this you can have two different wall and GUIs and also you know Revit ID so it makes much more sense for your um, uh, uh, IF6 port in this case here also the problematic here because if I hide the uh, floor as you can see that segment supposed to be separate segment but it appears as a one which is really funny so please uh, I think it's not good practice to do it or or the other way the construction that is construction correct construction for this case let's say in this scenario but because of you use um, incorrect join direction so the wall is actually subtract the geometry of uh, overlapping floor in this case which is also incorrect because that, that this is not the construction which we want to achieve so just be careful with this solid geometry uh, and of course you can always um, uh, change the direction of that you know switch the join order but I see uh, this sort of uh, mistake more and more appearing um, when you use dynamo script and it automatically uh, subtract I mean automatically maybe join between the elements but it's not about only clashes hard clashes but it's also about the accurate geometry how you get so just be careful if you use script trying to avoid this sort of mistake from your script all right let's move on um, so we talked about already this when you when world join in the slab you have to always avoid using join geometry operation or solid op operation in ARCHICAD and draw set model separate world. Again, this case is also many cases I can see when you insert openings and you know the small gap bottom of the world is remain because of incorrect uh, the position of uh, opening insertion point of the opening and in this case it gives you sort of um, you know very thin uh, material bottom of the world and this is realistically not possible to reinforce it so um, you know or on the side here also just be careful to in when you just think about your reinforcement covering need at least 30 millimeter distance from the world edges so this sort of um, modeling mistake is uh, critical in construction case and also in Revit I see many case uh, they want to dis disallow join the world and then forgot to join I mean forgot to put them in between the world so the world actually when it's exported there's a gap of course it's fine if it's precast world and it's supposed to be uh, have gap but if not this is obviously a mistake, so just make sure to, you know, um, push the boundary of the world side. Sorry. Yeah, I hate Revit modeling, but you know what I mean. This, um, that joining. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's just uh, because it's split it by the gap there is a rock uh, constraint um, case but what I mean is when you disallow join make sure this um, when you accidentally keep gap then make sure these guys are uh, aligned together so you don't have any gap for your uh, reinforcement concrete structure if it's precast that you wish to do it that way it's fine but yeah, there's a big difference between this and on the left side, sorry, on the left side or on the right hand side here. All right, I think this is pretty much um, most of common mistake um, when you model your Revit model or BIM model, let's say it doesn't have to be Revit. It, I see this sort of issue uh, generally everywhere, what, like the source from ARCHICAD, all plan, I don't know, like Tekra, any cases. So, and also there you can you they, there might be some special object you model with a in place model, like I don't know, you model with a rotable family or component in place component. But um, in that case, if you model this sort of special object, 
make sure if that's supposed to be one element then make sure these are created as one family instead of two segments and also when you create such a special object you must map that as a correct IFC entities otherwise this object just comes as a IFC building element proxy and that we have difficulty to classify I mean of course you can manually classify the classification of this um, foundation but it always takes time to find and assign it again to correct um, uh, category so just uh, trying to avoid um, I mean if you have to make it some sort of special object using component or in Archicad using form you know then make sure that special object have correct um, classification or IFC entity so that we can have clear information in this case here some like we some somehow draw the wall with object like component but then um, it's not mapped to IFC wall so it came as IFC building element proxy and which is absolutely not not correct it we missing sort of you know quantity take of information out of this sort of special object okay i think that's most of case i'm seeing the problem of i mean mistakes from um, architectural model or structural model i hope um the this sort of common mistakes um that i mentioned today is helpful to resolve your you know issue area um, and I think um, I, do, I know we have uh, time is always enemy so many case in uh, uh, planning stages um, everybody's busy and don't have time to look after this sort of things because any case of this common issue when you look at 2d drawing the 2d drawings are more or less correct out of this geometry but in reality in 3d it's not correct so um, that cause this building information modeling is important I would say many people saying that uh, building information management information management is more important but if you have wrong input to get correct output this is always you get wrong output so in my opinion building information modeling is still very important and it's essential for like getting quoting the correct information out of the model because the model is e eventually single source of truth it's not that information is the actual truth so i guess uh, many beam managers or beam coordinators beam creators missing that point these days but i i really want to emphasize on that the modeling is the most important the mo if model is precise then the output whatever information you're taking out from your model is always going to be guaranteed to be correct okay that's all for today thanks for watching it and if you think this video is uh, helpful for you then please thumbs up and click on the like button below and also if you subscribe my channel uh, that way you can support my personal research continuously. I see the videos, most of case 80-90% of people who watch is unsubscribed and I'm a little bit um, disencouraged to continue to do the research. So if you hit the subscribe, but subscription button, I would really appreciate it. Alright, then that's for my um, sort of Easter evening um, uh, talk. And I hope you have nice Easter holiday. Thank you. Bye-bye.